Come, come, gather round, children. Elder Simon has a tale to tell. Have you heard of the legend of old stick fingers? He who bumps in the night. The creaking har stalking the woods of our fine township. Oh, true, many monsters stalk the dark forests of Innistrad. And our village of Lamholt is no different. Stickfinger, though, is unlike any werewolf or vampire. While those creatures have a purpose behind their attacks, old Stickfingers is a construct whose purpose is as evil as any of our darkest desires. Sit back and learn the tale of old Stickfingers. A simple rhyme, a poem in passing, based on an all too true legend. And it all begins with a traveling mage just looking to help out. The Archmage is named Vodrick, a sorcerer of the night, an astral wizard who uses the power of the moon and stars to push back the forces of darkness. While others may be terrorized by the night sky, Vodrick finds strength in it, and he shares that power with his fellow Innistradians, especially in these trying times. As he's summoned to our humble Lamholt, Vodrick is pulled from husband and home, but he does so willingly for the good of mankind. Though the troubles of Lamholt may be more taxing than a single mage could handle, so another traveling hero makes their way towards the call. A man of martial prowess, a Cathar astride a heron griffin, one Rem Korolos, the stalwart slayer. Though these two men couldn't be more different, they both stood for the light and took on our troubles with much vigor, despite their initial hesitations. The troubles of Lamholt, well, they started some nights prior to this call. There have been attacks, people going missing on the outskirts of the village, farms abandoned and the like. A farmer, Arenos, I remember him well. He first went missing. His daughter, that poor girl, was lucky to be spared. Then, the wealthiest man in all of Lamholt, Solvasi, he too went missing. Seems like money can't buy you security anymore. Then, out in the fields, bodies of shepherds and young men on patrol started showing up. Something was hunting the people of Lamholt. These two brave souls, Vadric and Rem, first believed the culprit to be a common werewolf. True enough, the crime fits the beast's M.O. Hell, even one of the corpses found amongst the crops turned out to be a werewolf. Seemed easy a case as any. But still, the old crones of our fine village, well, they weren't convinced. They believed the monster of their old folk tales had returned. Stick fingers. Of course, our heroes were cautious to believe such lore. After all, a sleepy township tends to carry plenty of superstitions. On a clear night, stars shining brightly in the sky, more bodies are discovered, with Vodrick and Rem beginning their pursuit. Using his astral magic, Vodrick tracks those responsible with a sickly blue light, a trail that leads the men deep into the woods. On the way, they pass a dilapidated home, an old farmstead by the looks of it. Abandoned, they would guess, save for an odd green light that seemed to pulse through the broken window. Still, Vodrick's spell took them away from the home as the pair kept their guard up. Finally, that blue magical trail ends in the middle of the forest, indicating that their quarry should be right in front of them, but clearly it wasn't. This thing, whatever it was, was elusive. It could have been all around them or nowhere at all. As it turns out, they were the ones being stalked. As they turn around and face it. Its thin frame, its glowing green eyes, far more than any creature has any right to have. It could be none other than old stick fingers. The mage was just quick enough to raise a protective barrier over the pair before a barrage of sharp twigs shattered into it, 
This is how old Stick Fingers attacks his victims, impaling them with thousands of small wooden javelins. A creature of the wood who melds into the trees and attacks with sticks. Certainly odd, but odd always makes for good folklore. However, rarely are those tales true. Rarely. Not never. While Vodrick, always the thinker, studied his enemy, Rem moved into action. The Cathar driven by rage and faith alike. He swung his blade at old stick fingers, landing a blow and rending sickly white blood, the color of moonlight, to spot the ground. Old stick fingers howled with the sound of a hundred dogs barking. A mad cacophony as it shrugs off the Cathar and sends Rem flying into a tree. The fervor of the church certainly flowed through him as he got up and charged at Stickfinger again. This time, the monster was quite ready, grabbing both Rem and Vodrick in its cold, thin hands, lifting the pair with supernatural ease. The Archmage summoned all the power he could sending a bolt of ice at old stick fingers, not harming it so much as throwing it off balance, enough so for the two to be freed. Rem managed to get in a single strike, again, more of that white blood, but then old stick fingers vanished back into the trees, disappearing as if it were never there at all. Upon their return to the village, however, they were told another passage from old Stickfinger's legend. Every time you break my skin, I will break another man. A bad omen for our little Lamholt. Old Stickfinger couldn't be beaten with strength. Wits were key to destroying this monster. Luckily, Vodrick was gifted of the mind. It was a puzzle, and he just needed the right pieces. One of which being the first victim's daughter, Ariosa, who still lived in her father's farmstead. That simple shack, glowing of green, they had passed the night they faced stick fingers. Yet, she hadn't heard all that commotion. Vodrick mulled over this new information. Her father, a farmer of small means, he was arguing with the wealthiest man in Lamholt, the second victim. Sylvasi, it became more clear. It was a dispute over land. One, arrogant in their privilege, and the other, as stubborn as a mule. A recipe for disaster in even the best of times. While normally it would clearly be one of their faults, an act of aggression on one or maybe revenge by the other, clearly both here are victims. With the mystery only deepening, as the Salvasi home now lies abandoned, with warnings written upon the walls and the black fur of a goat dotting the floor. More pieces to the puzzle that only makes a blurry picture. Only one piece was clear. The daughter, Ariosa, and that house. Investigating their family cottage on the land her father looked to protect, Vodrick found two beds, made, as if expecting occupants that evening, though the maid surely believed Ariosa to be the only resident of the house. Curious, curious still, was the chimes he found hanging in the home's rafters. A simple thing, made of twigs, but two carrying the stench of witchcraft. Vodrick's nose could smell it from feet away. It wasn't merely a wooden wind chime, but an artifact meant to bind an evil to its owner's will. And with that final piece, the picture was made clear. Arinos, the farmer, he summoned old stick fingers and used this chime to bind the evil spirit. Clearly, its purpose was to drive away Sovazi, who threatened the man's farm. But something went wrong. Old Stickfinger broke free, and even turned against he who summoned it. The secret of Old Stickfingers, well, it's not a complex one, but it's a force that takes on the purpose of whomever summons it, for good 
or for ill. It's an ancient magic which pulls old stick fingers into reality, something Aranos just didn't fully understand. Aranos built that sigil, hung it to summon old stick fingers. He intended to use the spirit to protect his lands. He offered a black goat as a fitting sacrifice. He left that goat in the middle of the field that night, but the wealthy and conniving Silvazi saw it first and took the goat out of greed and ire. Old Stickfingers was summoned and instructed to protect the land, but without the sacrifice, it didn't know from whom to protect it against. To Old Stickfingers, everyone on this land was an intruder, including poor Aranos. And this land, well, its boundaries were far greater than its fencing would indicate. Old Stick Fingers hunted everyone who wandered onto the farm, aimless, with all the malice of a tireless grudge. The mystery was solved. Vodrick and Rem, along with the aspiring astral adept Ariosa, daughter of the slain, performed the ritual that satisfied Old Stick Fingers. With new prayers, Ariosa brought Old Stick Fingers to heal. Tall man, Long man, will you guard this home? Protect the one who calls, who dwells here, all alone. Hold stick fingers of the elders, take this goat in lieu of me. Avil vine lord, old destroyer, harm you none without my plea. Those who gathered watched on and witnessed old stick fingers wander back into the forest they called home, accompanied by two goats. A brown one the group had just used for this ritual, and a black one from its first attempted binding. Curious. And this girl, Ariosa, she knew the ritual, she knew the words to summon stick fingers. Curious still. And those beds. Why too? That glow the hunters saw on the first night. All very curious indeed. Old Stick Fingers is no simple construct of folklore. To us, the people of Lamholt, it's as real as the trees around us. One who stalks every argument, dispute, or grudge left to fester for far too long. So remember kids, don't let those feelings rot inside, or Old Stick Fingers may pay you a visit. The object of revenge can so easily turn on those with malice in their hearts. Go on now, sing that poem and heed its words. Old Stick Fingers, terror bringer, knows when children disobey. If you're slacking, he's attacking. Did you do your chores today? Old Stick Fingers, presence lingers inside every hollow tree. Don't sneak out or you'll shout, and no one will remember thee. Sticky Stick. He killed Vic. Don't go near, don't go near. Mr. Styx has lots of tricks. He can hear when you fear. Old Dame Hilgen lost her children. Where have they been? Where have they been? Old Stick Buddy in the muddy. Drag them in and wears their skin.